Good evening. You're watching the news at 7:30 on ATV. I'm Raymond Yang, and I'm Harminder Singh. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Police in Thailand offer 1 million baht for information on Bangkok blast. No toxic cyanide detected in rain at blast site, according to Tianjin authorities. And the Justice Secretary dismisses political motive behind charges against student activists. Police in Thailand are offering 1 million baht in exchange for information on anyone involved in the bombing in Bangkok on Monday night. This comes as the popular Erawan Shrine, where the blast occurred, reopened to the public today in a show of strength by the government. Two days after the shocking bomb attack at downtown Bangkok, more footage has emerged of the blast, which left at least 20 people dead, including two Hong Kong women. The video, believed to be taken immediately after the explosion, shows burning motorcycles and debris scattered all over the road, with scenes resembling a war zone. In segments which were too graphic to show, bodies could be seen lying around the busy intersection, while passersby attended to those injured. But in what is believed to be a show of strength and resolve by the Thai government that they will not be cowed by such terror attacks, they reopened the shrine this morning to the public. Locals and tourists alike flocked to the popular attraction to pay their respects, while Buddhist monks conducted ceremonies at the site for those killed. But one face of the statue of Praprom, which represents the Hindu god of creation Lord Brahma, remains damaged. Flowers and messages of support were left outside the shrine. I, I think you know, the government and the police has done very well last night, they protected and you, you feel safe. So I just want to, to feel like, you know, uh, life, come back to normal life. This mainland woman believed the attack was aimed at wrecking the country's tourism-dependent economy, so she showed up to lend her support. As business around the Thai capital returns to normal, police have gathered more details of the attack. This widely circulated CCTV footage reportedly shows the suspect in a yellow T-shirt leaving a backpack before walking away from the scene. The bomb went off soon after. Police have now released a detailed sketch of the man and have offered a 1 million Thai baht bounty, around $217,000 for information on the suspect. In a press conference, Police Chief Somnyo Pupa Muong said they believed the suspect was only part of a network, as there was no way the attack could have been carried out by a lone person. Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha has called on those involved in the explosion to turn themselves in for their own safety. Otherwise, he added, the syndicate may kill them before they are caught by police. Five among the six Hong Kong people injured in the Bangkok bombing are still receiving treatment in local hospitals. And despite the blast, a number of people are, are still setting off to Thailand, but some, are, but some say they will avoid the city. Corinne Young reports. Following the deadly explosion in Bangkok, some travelers are still continuing with their trip to Thailand. This woman said she's a little bit worried and will skip Bangkok and said she will mostly be staying in the hotel. However, this man said he has to stick to his business trip to the city, although he knows there are certain risks. In Bangkok, five Hong Kong residents are still receiving treatments in four local hospitals. A nine-year-old girl who has undergone surgeries and another injured Hong Konger will have to stay in hospital for a longer period of time. The doctors from Hospital Authority, who are offering help to Hong Kong residents in Bangkok, said some of the injured are suffering from trauma and will be given counseling. The Immigration Department said the families of the two Hong Kong women who died have claimed their bodies and have expressed the wish to return home. Yesterday, the Security Bureau issued a red travel alert to Bangkok and the Travel Industry Council announced that 18 major travel agents had decided to cancel all tours to the Thai capital until the end of this month. Residents seeking help can call Immigration Department's 24-hour hotline at 852-1868. In the meantime, Democratic Party lawmaker James To, who is a member of the Legco Security Panel, has joined the travel industry in calling for a black travel alert for Bangkok. A black travel alert would allow people who have booked flights to Bangkok to get a full refund. Karen Yang, ATV News.
Authorities in Tianjin say no toxic cyanide was detected in rain that fell yesterday at the site where two massive explosions at a warehouse in the port city killed 114. But they have strengthened efforts to prevent the dispersal of hundreds of tons of toxic cyanide from the site amid more rainfall forecast. Marcus Chi had the details. Earlier this week, water tested at eight of the area's 40 water monitoring stations was found to contain excessive levels of cyanide, and some samples contained 28 times the standard level. Now, experts fear that rainfall over the coming days may flush the scattered chemicals into pipes that drain directly into the sea. However, authorities are hoping to contain the pollution by deploying mobile water treatment facilities at the site to purify and drain the existing contaminated water. The deputy chief of Chinese Research Academy of Environmental Sciences, Song Yonghui, said the water treatment plant will be able to process 3,000 tons of water per day. And he added that according to their calculations, they will be able to treat all the contaminated water in the pipelines and drain it at the qualified standard within one to two days. At a news conference today, authorities played down concerns about toxic rain after journalists complained about seeing white foam on rainwater on the ground. Bao Jingling, the chief engineer of the Tianjin Environmental Protection Bureau, said lab tests showed that the concentration of cyanide in the water samples was 0.137 mg per kilometer and the pH value was 7.5. Bao said these figures are all within normal range and no abnormality was detected. In the meantime, the Tianjin port group said it will cooperate with the investigations into the blasts. If the investigation team finds the Tianjin port group, no matter whether it's the group or individuals, if in some aspect there's a problem, we will bravely accept our responsibilities and face any punishment, Zhang Qingyui, the chairman of Tianjin Port, said. The port group also distanced itself from the warehouse owner, Reihai Logistics, saying it is just one company among many others operating at the port. And it added that it was not directly responsible or aware of Reihai's operations. Around 150 homeowners whose estate was destroyed in the Tianjin explosions have stepped up their protests against the government. They are demanding that the government to buy back their apartments as they did not receive proper compensation for their destroyed homes. This man surnamed Zhang said they don't dare live near the port anymore. He said he fears for the health of himself, his family and especially his children. A total of 114 people have been confirmed killed and 57 remain missing after two huge explosions occurred just before midnight last Wednesday at a warehouse storing hazardous chemicals. Marcus Chi, ATV News. Seven people have died and 17 others are reported missing after heavy rain pounded Sichuan province non-stop for the past three days. And weather forecasters are warning of more heavy rains and gales in the next 24 hours. Vicky Wen reports. Sichuan Shiyong County, which recorded more than 146 millimeters of rain, caused severe flooding and mudslides. They destroyed homes, damaged more than 20,000 hectares of farmland, cut off power, telecommunications and roads. The floods were too big and many houses have been destroyed, a government spokesman for Xuyong, Wei Guanyan said. He said they have been searching for those missing for the past two days and hopes are fast fading for their survival. The heavy rain and floods in Sichuan province have affected more than half a million people, with economic losses estimated at about 210 million yuan. Weather forecasters have warned of more rains in the next 24 hours in the central and eastern regions, with possible thunderstorms, gales and hailstorms in Anhui and Jiangxi provinces. Vicky Wen, ATV News. Back locally, Justice Secretary Rimsky Yun says it is an unhealthy point of view to accuse the authorities of political considerations whenever they prosecute public figures. Yun was responding to concerns that the charges laid against student activists for the alleged storming of government headquarters last year was politically motivated. Vicky Wen reports. Alex Chow, the former Secretary General of the Federation of Students, said he was informed by the police that he will also be charged for taking part in an unlawful assembly on the 26th of September last year and inciting others to follow suit. He joins Nathan Law, the current leader of the Federation, and Scholarism's convener Joshua Wong, who were informed yesterday that they too will be charged with a similar offence. They were among a group of demonstrators who stormed the front of government headquarters, known as Civic Square, by clambering over a three-meter-high fence. 
That action eventually triggered Occupy movement, which lasted for 79 days. The student leaders have been told to report to the police next Thursday. The decision to charge the students nearly one year after the event has raised questions as to whether they were politically motivated. Speaking in Beijing, Justice Secretary Rimsky Yun dismissed the allegations, saying it is an unhealthy point of view to every time accuse the authorities of carrying out political prosecutions whenever charges are made against well-known personalities, such as activists and legislators. Yun said it takes time for the officers to go through evidence of criminal cases which happened during the Occupy Movement period. The justice chief reiterated that the decision was not made under any political pressure, nor was it deliberately timed to go inside with the upcoming district council elections. Asked about the progress of the investigation into seven officers who allegedly beat up civic party activist Ken Zheng during the Occupy demonstrations last October, Yun said the judiciary is still waiting for legal advice from lawyers in the UK. Vicky Wen, ATV News. A bus driver has been found guilty of dangerous driving in an accident which injured more than 20 people last year. But first, a former banker has been sentenced to life imprisonment for killing his mistress, who has been missing for more than four years. Marcus Chi reports. This is the first time in Hong Kong that a person has been convicted of murder based solely on circumstantial evidence. The seven-member jury unanimously convicted 41-year-old Ivan Chan Man Sum, a former Guotai Junan Securities Director, after two hours of deliberation. The defendant was arrested last year and is believed to have killed and disposed the body of 33-year-old Chan Ka Yi, although he has denied the charges. Deputy Judge Michael Stewart Moore pointed out that circumstantial evidence provided by the CCTV security system was very helpful. Senior Constable Chong Chi Ming said the two-year investigation has been challenging and believes that justice has been served. In October 2011, Chan was caught on security footage as having entered Chan's apartment building in the Moy Gardens in Kowloon Bay multiple times before her disappearance. Once, he left with a bulky bag on a trolley and subsequently ordered the remodeling of her flat. Chan has been missing ever since and her body has never been found. The district court has sentenced a 53-year-old bus driver who had admitted to a charge of dangerous driving to 12 months in jail. The court took into account that he was the most seriously injured victim and had to stay for more than two months in the hospital, as well as his good road safety record. In November last year, the bus he was driving crashed and derailed a light rail train travelling through Tun Mun, injuring more than 20 people. Marcus Chi, ATV News. Paralympic gold medalist Oscar Pistorius is set to be released on Friday after serving only one-sixth of his sentence for culpable homicide. But first, a hacker group has made good on their promise to release detailed information of users of extramarital affairs website Ashley Madison. A hacker group calling themselves the Impact Team released a massive cache of information from cheating spouse's website Ashley Madison. Information included in the 9.7 gigabyte data dump are email addresses, logins, and credit card transaction details of some 32 million users. The group had threatened to release the information last month if Avid Life Media, owner of Ashley Madison, did not take down the website. The hackers appeared to target the site over questionable morals the website allegedly condoned and encouraged. Avid Life Media condemned the release of data in a statement calling it criminality and not an act of activism. On a visit to the annexed region of Crimea, Russian President Vladimir Putin took a dive in an underwater submersible and descended to the bottom of the Black Sea to look at shipwrecks from the 11th century. Known for pulling stunts to display his toughness, Putin said there were many interesting things at the bottom of the sea floor. Crimea was annexed by the Russian Federation in March of last year following the overthrow of the pro-Russian government in Kiev, Ukraine. This led to sanctions being imposed on Russia by the US, EU, Canada and Japan. Since the toppling of the government, there has been continuous fighting between Ukrainian forces and pro-Russian rebels in the east of Ukraine. Regrettably, we are now seeing this conflict escalation and the blame lies not with the Donbass militia but with the rival side, Putin said. He also said the future of the Crimean Peninsula was already determined by its people who had voted to reunite with Russia. 
ополчения. South Africa's Justice Minister has said he is seeking legal advice on whether the parole board was right to release Oscar Pistorius on house arrest this Friday after serving only a sixth of his five-year sentence. Pistorius was imprisoned after he was found guilty of culpable homicide for fatally shooting his girlfriend Riva Steenkamp on Valentine's Day in 2013 after mistaking her for an intruder. However, according to the Correctional Services, Pistorius's release is in line with South African sentencing guidelines. Such an offender must be considered for placement under correctional supervision after serving at least one-sixth of his or her sentence, which in the case of this offender amounts to 10 months. However, the early release does not sit well with some Praetorians. I think it's not right. What he did, killing a woman and getting off scot free what message is he sending out to the world? So anyone can be just killed and they can go into jail and after six months they're out. It was not right. Upon his release, Pistorius will be mostly confined to the home of his uncle and is expected to perform community service.